I'm Linda Beasy. This is Janet Carter, and we're going to be facilitating the discussion today. But first, I want to welcome the Spirit among us. Yes. The Holy Spirit appeared as flames of fire on the first church on Pentecost. May God's Spirit be with us today. And please pray with me. Loving God, thank you for giving us this time. May it be a time of Selah, when we rest and listen for what your Spirit has to say to us about how we may participate in the Matthew 25 initiative. Thank you for each person who's here. Bless us with your presence. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, at the end of the session, we want you to fill out this, well, it's called an exit card, but it's actually an exit half sheet of paper. So if you don't have one, uh, actually if you want, add it to the pen and whatnot. But first, before we go any further, let's just go around the room and say our names so everyone has a chance to be known. Let's start with you, Tom. Uh, Tom Collins. Thank you. Leslie Dennis. Nancy Kim. Susan Jennings. Eric Richter. Jean Dewar. Pat Hornick. Lee Cogan. Ruth Bustos. Michael Ryan. Audrey Kraft. And you folks um, the second row? Rachel Hyde. Julie Griffith. Gordon Griffith. Great. Good to know you all. Emma. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. Oh, Wait. Yes. Okay. All right. So, um, just as a quick review for some of you who were here, uh, who are new and weren't here last week, um, the Matthew 25 initiative uh, comes from the uh, worldwide PC USA. Um, it has been adopted by our presbytery, the presbytery of Lake Michigan, and it's a brand new initiative based on a scripture um, in Matthew 25, of course. So I'm just going to read you some of that so that we can get the scriptural context of um, what we're doing today. Um, let's hear the word of the Lord. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory, and all the nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate people from one another, as a sheep separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come! You that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. So from that powerful scripture comes this Matthew 25 initiative. And what had come out of the formation of it um, were three areas of focus. And if you go to this brochure, um, and open it up, in the middle section, it says where to begin. And so, um, so I'm just going to read the three bullet points there to bring us all together under the three focuses of 
uh, Matthew 25 initiative. The first one is building congregational vitality by challenging congregations and their members to deepen and energize their faith and grow as joyful leaders and disciples actively engaged with their community. Seeing new disciples engaged in ministry and long-standing believers develop in faith as the gospel of Jesus Christ is shared in word and deed. So building our own congregational vitality. Dismantling structural racism by fearlessly applying our faith to advocate and break down the systems, practices, and thinking that underlie discrimination, bias, prejudice, and oppression of people of color. Third is eradicating systemic poverty by acting on our beliefs and working to change laws, policies, plans, and structures in our society that perpetuate economic exploitation of people who are poor. So we're going to take um, a closer look at these three initiatives this week, this um, congregational vitality, um, dismantling structural racism, and eradicating systemic poverty. And we're going to look first together um, at the seven marks of a vital congregation. Uh, so if you have this sheet, take that one out. Um, and so what I'm going to do is kind of put some of you on the spot, um, <laughs> if you're willing, okay? So um, if we could start over here, let's just go around um, and each person who is willing and wants to read one of these um, seven marks. And if you don't want to, just look at the next person and they'll read next. Okay? So, Audrey, are you willing? Yes. All right. Thank you. And this is tricky without glasses. Oh. A commitment to forming disciples over every member's uh, lifetime, before they have been in the return of the this leads first to personal transformation that people put on the heart of Christ, and then to social transformation as people joyfully go forth into the community and tackle the issues facing today's culture. Do you want me to read yours? Um, the next one is embracing the call to evangelism. We show forth the love of Christ by our actions and our lives even more than by our words. Our relationships are genuine and caring. People know we are Christians, Christians by our love. Okay. And our focus, our church is not a place to escape from the world, but rather our gateway to our community where we may be the hands, feet, heart, and mouth of Jesus Christ for people who are suffering or marginalized. Empowering every member to discover their individual calling and the gifts God has given them so that they can go forth and serve. Spirit inspired worship that challenges, teaches, transforms, convicts, and energizes us so that when we are sent out, we have experienced the wonder of God and are changed for the better from when we arrived. Caring relationships modeled on God's love. We open our doors and our hearts to all people, and we build relationships modeled on God's love, which leads to genuine reconciliation and peace. Congregations with healthy systems. Our mission focuses are clear. There is fiscal responsibility and accountability. We have thoughtful decision-making structures. Our leaders and staff enjoy a sustainable balance of work and rest time. Thank you all for reading. Um, so you can see that this congregational vitality is all-encompassing. Um, and one thing that really struck me about this Matthew 25 initiative is that it's not like 
somebody is going to come up with an idea and just form a committee and they're going to do all the work. It's really an idea is, the ideas are going to bubble up and the entire church, all the different facets of the church are going to join in and, um, and make contributions to that um, exciting initiative, whatever it might be, or many, we're hoping. So, um, so these are the seven marks of a vital congregation. That's one of our areas, our three areas. And now what we're going to do is show you two uh, videos from the PCUSA website. Um, and uh, let's see. Um, the first one is about structural racism. It's called Two Churches in Philadelphia. Press, uh, Two Churches in Philadelphia. Okay? And these are really neat videos. And the second one is uh, a video from a church in Los Angeles um, having to do with homelessness. And as you watch these videos, um, we'd like you to keep in mind these questions. Note anything that's surprising to you. Did you find anything there that was surprising? Um, what questions um, does the video raise for you? And where is their congregational vitality? Okay? So, I'm going to get this going.